The next item on the order paper is a motion on development proposals from the Western Education and Library Board. The Business Committee has agreed to allow up to one hour thirty minutes for this debate. The proposer of the motion will have ten minutes to propose and ten minutes to wind. One amendment has been selected and is published on the Marshall list. The proposer will have ten minutes to propose the amendment and five minutes to wind. All other speakers will have five minutes. Clark, please read the motion. That this Assembly notes development proposals 260, 261 and 262 by the Western Education and Library Board regarding the proposed closure of the Collegiate Grammar School and Portora Royal School. Commend the staff and pupils of both schools for the excellent GCSE and A-level results achieved again this year and requires the Minister of Education to reject the development proposals and seek consensus on the future of these schools with broad community support. I call Lord Morrow to move the motion. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I beg to move the motion standing in my name and that of my party colleague, Arlene Foster. Um, members will no doubt have noted that the motion refers to the development proposals 260, 261 and 262 by the Western Education and Library Board. These proposals, if carried through, will not only close the Collegiate Grammar School, but will have far-reaching implications for the future of post-primary education in the controlled voluntary sector in County Fermanagh as a whole. The establishment of a new co-educational, -edu non-denominational voluntary grammar school operating on a split site incorporating Petora Royal School is envisaged. These proposals are being pushed ahead, sadly, without consensus. And surely this is something I think that the Minister wants to, to divert some of his attention to. I am firmly of the view that such controversial proposals should have as a starting point consensus and broad community support. I would at this point like to congratulate both the Collegiate and the, the Petora Royal on their achievements in providing a standard of education in County Fermanagh, which is of an excellent and high standard. The main areas of concern, Deputy Speaker, in relation to the process to date are 1. The process itself lacks account public accountability. That is surely something that I, I would hope that the Minister will attempt to uh, address whenever he uh, gets up to, to speak here later this morning. The rationale, secondly, the rationale that seeks to undermine the process does not stand up to scrutiny. And three, the proposals to close a highly successful oversubscribed grammar school, which has a, re a reputation second to none. The removal of the collegiate will result in an inequality of opportunity for the young people of County Fermanagh. And fourthly, the current programme for government states that building a united community, improving community relations and promoting shared education are its key proposals. It is firmly of my view that the process of the Western Education and Library Board's proposals fall far short of all of these objectives. I implore the Minister, before these proposals are adopted, that careful consideration is given to the expressed will of the Board of Governors, staff, parents and pupils, and the strong opposition from the community as a whole. Mr. Speaker, Deputy Speaker, it appears there is a determined attempt to set one school against another, and that is the most unfortunate fallout from this whole episode. Also, the amendment to the motion today, in my opinion, to say the least, is mischievous. An attempt to introduce Devonish into this debate is, to say the least, unhelpful. Divide and conquer seems to be the motive. The Western Education Library Board approved the publication of these proposals fully aware of the strength of opposition expressed in their own consultation process in March-April of this year. One can only ask the question why the determination to push ahead with proposals which are inherently unpopular and so much out of step with the whole community. I'd like Mr. Deputy Speaker, to bring to the attention of the Assembly some other issues here. There 
are also significant issues of accountability about the Fermanagh Protestant Board of Education, which under these proposals will be the body which would act as the trustees of the new school. And a recent open letter in the local press asked a few pertinent questions. Make public the scheme which sets out its powers and responsibilities to indicate when the current members were elected and the length of time for which they will hold office in light of the statement in earlier con correspondence in the press from the FPBE that it is made up of people elected through the representatives process of the three what are called the traditional churches, namely the Presbyterian, Methodist and Church of Ireland. More, to outline the channels of communication between those elected representatives and the church communities from which they come, and to indicate if at any level do these members consider themselves accountable to the members of their denominations throughout County Fermanagh. That was the content of that particular open letter which I think was very significant. What was the reply? Alas, there was no reply. And we have to beg the question, why would that be? Why could this body not stand up and address the questions of concern that were posed, not once, but twice? So we still await a reply. Mr. Deputy Speaker, it is my opinion, and I suspect the opinion of many in this House today, that for a school, for the non-negotiable factors in the ongoing process against which are judged any proposals are judged, would have to ensure that quality of educational experience is the widest sense for all young people. The quality of curricular provision, which meets the needs of all the young people in the area, and the quality of outcome. I believe those are the important factors that need to be addressed. One of the most worrying aspects of these proposals, if carried through with, is the fact that a highly successful school can be closed against the express will of its Board of Governors, staff, parents, pupils, and a very significant section of the wider community than area planning lacks public confidence. That in my opinion, is quite clear. The need of young people should always be the motivating factor. There cannot be anything else that can be the issue here. And that does not appear to be the case here. The outcome must, of any process must surely be threefold. The quality of educational experience, the quality of curricular provision, the quality of outcomes, Mr. Speaker, it appears to many, in particular in County Fermanagh, that in the Western Education Library Board's proposals 260, 261 and 262, that these will not be achieved. Some have attempted, and this is where we part company with the amendment, some have made an attempt here to sow seeds of confusion and they've introduced the Devonish debate into this whole debate. And I feel that that is unfortunate. And I believe, however, it has been done deliberately to confuse. The minister has already on record as saying, irrespective of the outcome in relation to Portora and the collegiate, that Devonish goes ahead. That decision, according to the Minister, has already been made. I would like him today to again reiterate that and state quite clearly, as he has stated in the past, that Devonish is not part of this debate. It has been agreed that a new school will be provided. And what we would like to also hear from the Minister today is when will be the commencement date of the Devonish development? Now, Mr. Deputy Speaker, we have asked this question before. We have tried to push the Minister on it to give some definitive dates 
around when this will commence. I think that today is an opportunity for the Minister now to put that one completely to bed and give us a date as to when the Devonish project will commence. And I believe in doing that, he can take a lot of the confusion and the discord out of a debate that has been going on for, for so long. And I would ask the Minister to take on, on board the fact that this is not finding support across the community, in particular by those who will be affected most by it. I so move, Mr Deputy Speaker, and I look forward to hearing what others have to say in relation to this particular motion. We will not be supporting the amendment as put forward here today. Thank you. Call Mr Chris Hazard to move the amendment. I just want to move the amendment here today and indeed start off by thanking the business office for accepting the amendment. I think unlike the original motion, um, our amendment is inclusive of all the educational needs of the young people in Fermanagh, not merely a few, and indeed it reflects the feelings of local people on the ground in Fermanagh who are somewhat disturbed that the interests of the few may marginalise the silent majority. And this is exactly where the DUP are going wrong. The DUP need to answer a few questions here today. No less important by starting off with, who did the DEP consult with in bringing this motion forward today? Or is this simply a hobby horse for Ms Foster? We are kept reminded when we look onto the media that the Collegiate is a old school, as if for some reason that nugget of information helps the educational interests of the young people in Fermanagh going forward in the years ahead. It simply doesn't. Because that's what the DEP should be doing. They should be examining and championing what is in the educational interests of all the young people in Fermanagh in the years ahead not the narrow institutional interests of a particular school or a particular Board of Governors. It will indeed, yeah. Will the member acknowledge that in the email, which I assume he is referring to from the email account of Mr Morton, uh, also makes reference to the fact that there were various meetings that took place uh, between myself, uh, Mr Elliott uh, of the Ulster Unionist Party, and all of the heads and of the Board of Governors, the Collegiate, Batora, Devonish, the then Lisson Ski High School, which as we know was closed uh, very recently. Uh, and because there was no consensus found at those meetings, it has been decided that they will go ahead regardless of the fact that there is no consensus. So is the member saying that we shouldn't, consider, that we shouldn't continue to find consensus, or is he just saying that because two schools have decided on a way forward, that the other schools should just sit back and say nothing? I thank the, the Minister for intervention. Uh, I think what I would say is. I've been on the back bench for a reason. I am not the Minister in this debate. I'm sure the Member will take note of that. Yeah. Taking note of the point that is raised, indeed. Uh, around consensus, and this is what the DUP need to take on board. When you talk about broad community support, it's about engaging with the broad community, not one particular school or one particular board of governors. And that's exactly where they went wrong in this. But I'll come back to other correspondence that was quick, because no doubt the, the, the member has obviously received uh, correspondence as well. But the motion calls on the minister to seek consensus, that he should seek broad community support. Yet from what we've heard today, and indeed for the correspondence that we have received, it's the DUP who appear to be running away from this notion of broad community consensus. And I just want to read out a, a piece of correspondence that um, Ms Foster has referred to. Uh, indeed, it's, an, it's, it's another piece of correspondence that we received, and received it on behalf of the Board of Governors of Pretoria and Davenish College. Um, as the chairs of the Boards of Governors of Pretoria School and Davenish College, respectively, they have instructed the Board of Governors to make it very clear that the motion relating to development proposals 260, 261 and 262 which proposals have significant consequences for post-primary education in non-denominational schools in County Fermanagh have not been discussed with either of our schools by the individuals tabling the motion. Now, if you're looking for broad consensus and community support, you think you would go and talk to the very people that uh, a resolution is going to affect. The DUP have failed to do this, but we shouldn't be surprised that we failed to do this. And indeed, they've gone on to say the development proposals and questions have the unanimous support of both our boards of governors. Unanimous. Um, now I'm not going to stand here. The member give way? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I want to thank the member for giving way. Would the member agree with me that it's important that the educational needs of Devonish College are taken into consideration? 
Yeah, I thank the member for intervention, uh, and I agree 100%. You know, and this is what area planning is all about. We we need to get it into our heads that when it is decisions taken in one particular school, it has an impact on all the schools in the area. And this is again, time and time again, the DUP fail to bring this um, point to the forefront of their minds. So I thank the member for raising it. Um, but I'm not going to stand here as a member for South Down and dictate to the people of Fermanagh what is the best way forward for their young people. But one thing is for sure is that whatever decisions are made, it must be made in the interest of all the children. We must cherish all of our children and not simply a few. So where is the mention of Devon's College in all of this? The DUP run away from it. They think it's confusion the matter to raise about it, to talk about other children in the educational area. Do the pupils at Devon's College not matter to the DUP? Do they, do they, not, care? Do they not care about it? No, I've, I've heard enough from the other side. The DUP, and this is very, very, it's an important reason, the DUP's vision will do nothing for tackle educational inequality and indeed underachievement in the Enniskillen and Fermanagh area. Recently, the Education Committee heard about the differentials in achievement between Protestant boys and Protestant girls and everything else. What the DUP want to do today is run away from problems they got. They're not prepared to tackle the causes. DUP want to talk about education and underachievement in boys, and we've seen it, and I'm glad the, the member for North Belfast is here, because the Schenkel is one of the, the areas where this is most pertinent. They run away from reform in the common funding form. It's the very same formula that's now pumped millions into the Schenkel, and we see the DUP welcoming it. So they need to decide, are they going to stand up and show real leadership on an issue? No, we've heard enough from the other side. No, we've heard enough from the other side. Here's a chance to stand up for all the children in Fermanagh and to put, put down plans that it is in the best interest of all the children from Anna for years to come, not to get behind a hobby horse, what it appears, a hobby horse of one particular member, and to stand up for one particular school. And with, I want to turn now to the correspondence received from uh, the principle that Ms Foster pointed out. And one of the main things, and I'm sure other members will, will look to speak on it, I want to speak about is the issue of duplication and replication of resources. In 2012, 20 subjects were accessed by just eight pupils at AS level, and indeed 22 subjects accessed by just eight pupils again at A2 level. We need to ask ourselves the question, is that the best use of education resources? Are the children who are attending in classes getting the best out of them classes as what they could? I just want to, to finish on one point, uh, last can call you. And that's sort of the notion that we would be losing the collegiate, that somehow the collegiate would be disappearing in, into the ether. This is absolutely not the case. The collegiate would be gaining. The bright young minds that are in the collegiate now would be challenged by more bright young minds. That can only be good for the educational interests of all the people in Fermanagh. I would ask all the parties to support the amendment. I call Mr Sean Rogers. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. The SDLP strongly believe that parental choice is the cornerstone of an effective education system and one that cannot be overlooked. We are committed to the establishing of an education system that would provide an enriching and holistic education for all our young people. In order to make well-informed decisions on the best education route for our children, parents must have a diverse range of schools as possible from which to choose, be they integrated, state, Irish medium or faith-based schools. Yet the present development proposals will result in the loss of two single-sex schools in the area, an option that a number of parents are passionate about and evidently want to determine to retain. A document produced by Collegiate Action Group highlighted that the proposal will reduce further the number of post-primary schools in the controlled voluntary sector for Manor from the original six to two. Parents will have less choice. This certainly needs to be addressed. I only can begin to understand this situation if I switch it to a South Down scenario. I, will list, I treat with respect all comments, but particularly comments come from members from Fermanagh. I look forward to hearing others. But it is rather disconcerting that other schools which may be affected by these proposals were not consulted by the proposers of this motion beforehand. In fact, I would have been surprised if this motion had been withdrawn. I would have expected the proposers of this motion would have sought consensus of the community. It is certainly worth mentioning that the development proposals have the support of Portora and Devonish. Irrespective of this motion or the amendment, we need, a carefully we, need, we need to carefully consider the strategy that benefits all the pupils. Parental choice and the views of the local community should be in the forefront in the mind of the minister while making this decision. Failure to do so will leave a negative impact on relationships between the department and the local community, which is a benefit to no one. 
The Collegiate Action Group has plainly and repeatedly voiced its concerns about this amalgamation. The 7,000 strong petition that was delivered to the Assembly in June of this year clearly demonstrates the depth of local feeling and clear opposition that exists towards this development. The Collegiate Grammar, Pretoria Loyal, Royal and D. Devonish have played a key role in the education of the community, and any attempt to diminish or distort this must be handled with extreme caution. Full consideration must be given to the potential detrimental effects across the wider community. I share the concerns of the principal of the Collegiate that, when she said that seeking consensus on the future and broad community support has been delayed in the Sinn Féin amendment. That consensus might be difficult, but we need to achieve it. In providing strong education and future career options for all our young people, we must ensure that the rights and choices of parents and students are, are not overlooked or dismissed. It is important that as we move forward, the good work of the Fermanagh Learning Community, which encourages shared education, is given its rightful place in any plans for the future. The importance of parental choice in this matter cannot be emphasised enough, and I urge the Minister to give careful consideration to the genuine concerns that have been raised and to be guided by the experience of local opinion. While full consensus has not yet been reached, I would urge all parties to get back around the table and work with the Western Education Library Board to ensure a resolution. Thank you. Call Mr. Tom Elliott. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Speaker, and uh, welcome the, the opportunity here today to, to have a discussion and debate on, on this particular issue. Uh, can I, at the outset, uh, declare an interest to some degree uh, Deputy Speaker, and that my daughter is a pupil at Devonish College, and I have a son that I hope will soon be attending one of the three that is in, in question here today. Um, but obviously, this is an issue that causes a great deal of debate uh, within the Fermanagh area, and indeed, uh, some of that debate maybe goes slightly too far at times, and it, it does create a huge wave of difficulties, uh, not only within communities, but indeed uh, within particular families. And I know. I was at two different events yesterday and was lobbied very strongly uh, on both sides of the argument on this. So, uh, you know, it, it is a, an extremely difficult issue, and I have no wish here today, Mr. Deputy Speaker, to make that any worse uh, for any of those groups involved. And I would expect that all of those schools, if I were a Board of Governor on, on one of those schools, whatever it was, I would want to do, try to do the best for that particular school whatever it was, and I think that's, that's only right, and I have no disrespect to any of the, the boards of governors of those schools that wish to take a particular uh, decision and take a particular route. The three development proposals that we're discussing here today of 260, 261 and 262 recommend the discontinuance of the Collegiate Grammar and Batora Royal Schools and the establishment of a new single grammar school for Fermena. However, that proposal to establish a new single school does not necessarily mean a new bill school. Uh, this could result with effectively two schools and two sites with supposedly one management structure, but I stress there is no guarantee that a new single school building will be constructed. We are well aware of the delays in the building uh, of and indeed commencing the building of Devonish College. And I recall back in late 2004 and 2005, where many of us uh, were lobbying for the retention of Devonish, we heard the promises at that time, uh, and the, the, the old Kiesh site was being closed at that stage, which was the former Duke of Westminster High School. We heard the promises then of a new construction at Devonish on the Temper Road in Enniskillen, and indeed the promise was that it would be built by 2008. Now, uh, some six years later, we do not even have the, the commencement of that. Um, so, even though in the past year and a half the Minister has linked the issues of the outcome of these development proposals with a new build at Devonish, I have continually pressed the Minister to separate the two aspects uh, that is, the new build of Devonish should not be linked to the amalgamation of Collegiate and Batora. And I had a meeting with the Minister uh, just a w uh, less than two weeks ago, and in fairness to him, he, he has said 
that the Department will build Devonish College irrespective of the outcome of these development proposals. However, the numbers that Devonish will be built for, as I understand it, and I'm happy that he confirms this or, or tells me different if I've got it wrong, I'm happy to listen to that, that the numbers that the new Devonish will be built for will indeed be dependent on uh, the proposal around the merger of Petora and Collegiate or not. We must have equality of... Yeah, I'm happy to give way. Yeah. I, I thank the, the member for giving way, and I'm not going to speak for John O'Dowd because he's more than capable of doing it for himself. But in terms of the, the numbers that are going to be looked at with regards to a future bill for Devonish College, does the, the member accept the minister's statement that um, if 70 first years go into both schools, that that leaves a reduced um, catchment population for Devonish College and as such that the numbers go down. So does the member accept that fact in, in demographics, that the demographics in Fermanagh are changing and if we continue to allow the two grammar schools to cream off 140 pupils that it will result in a reduced intake to Devonish College? Well, I think it's not just a matter of me accepting it. I think it's a matter of reality that if uh, there are higher numbers going into the two grammar schools then there will be less for other schools, whether that's Devonish or, or any other school. So that, that's just a reality. So if, if there is no merger between Collegiate and Petora, then of course there will be a reduced number uh, for the construction of, of Devonish. So I think that's, that's uh, a reality. If it's quick. Quick. Uh, in response to Mr Alistair, uh, the Minister said that an economic appraisal for the new school at Devonish was for 800 pupils, so that has already been set, uh, and therefore the discussion around uh, the closure of two schools and the building of a new one is really uh, not connected with Devonish College at all. Well, I think to be fair, that's an issue for the Minister to, to answer uh, in relation to whether he will build it. Uh, for the 800 or 850, or whether he will reduce it if there's, there's no merger. Uh, I think what I was going on to say there, Deputy Speaker, is that there must be equality of funding uh, within the control sector and other sectors. And, uh, I recently received figures for the amount of capital spent on schools in Fermanagh in the past seven years. And within the maintained sector and associated voluntary grammar, there was 18.12 million spent on capital projects, whereas within the control sector and associated voluntary grammar, there was only four and a half million spent, Members over four time times the stop. amount spent on, on the capital projects in the maintained sector. And finally, just in a couple of seconds, uh, Deputy Speaker, I want to say I wish everybody well with, with future negotiations and discussions, because we've been at it for over 10 years and haven't made a huge amount of progress. I call Mr Trevor Lunn. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Um, I, th I think Mr Elliott has, has quite well summed up the problems that there are, particularly in Fermanagh, around a proposal like this, and uh, his last comment there, we've been at it for 10 years, indicates to me that the, 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 the possibility of uh, consensus on this issue is probably not fairly slim, and it really requires eventually a decision to be taken, which is the best decision for the the young children of Fermanagh, and which provides the best educational outcome for those children. So what, what that would be is, is the question. They, they certainly produced a, a different debate to what we'd normally have around education in this place, because it doesn't mention religion or selection. And, and uh, we are actually talking about a brand new voluntary grammar versus the continuation of single sex education on two sites in Anniskillen. That begs the question to me, Mr. Deputy Speaker, what, uh, what, what does a parent of a young girl do in Enniskillen if they would prefer that that young girl should be educated on a co-educational basis? Because there, there, there isn't that facility. It actually applies in reverse. Sorry? Well, Duncan's a bit of a distance from that. Are, 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 are there, please, are there, please, the member will take his seat. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, about mem the member will take his seat. Oh, sorry. I just want to remind members, please, that making remarks from a statutory position is not the practice of this assembly. Continue. Yes, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I'm sorry about that. The, the, um, the, 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 there's a big debate going on. I noticed, and, and I've never had so much correspondence on a particular issue. <laughs> since I joined the committee, uh, and I, I have some sympathy, I must say, for the Fermanagh members who have to wrestle with this, because I think it's, it's, a, it's a difficult one for them. But on, on the question of whether girls do better if they're educated in a girls-only school, 
I, I say statistics that indicate that may well be the case. <laughs> I see other statistics which, which indicate it's not the case. There's another question because of the size of these two schools about is, is big better, is small better? The, the folk from the collegiate have very eloquently described a situation where, where they think their results are terrific and that is because it's a relatively small grammar school restricted to female intake only. I mean, Frank, that, that just doesn't stack up in the real world, nor does the argument that a small school is better than a big school. The, 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 the bigger grammars across Northern Ireland fare very well in any statistics you would look at, as do co-educational schools. We are actually talking about the two smallest grammar schools in Northern Ireland here. They've both got less than 500 pupils, and uh, whenever the entitlement framework kicks in just next year, uh, it, it seems unlikely that they will be able to deliver the full curriculum if, if they remain separate. That, that, that's going to be a legal requirement, so I, I really don't know what they're going to do. One, one of the previous speakers mentioned the fact that uh, I know in the case of Portora they have over 20 classes with less than eight pupils in each. That, that's, that's not a sustainable position. And the, the, the normal solution at the present time is uh, what's very much in vogue at the moment, which is a shared education scenario. But you must say, you know, Fermanagh is actually leading the way in terms of shared education, but it doesn't seem to apply to the, these particular schools, because as far as I'm aware, and I'm quite happy to be corrected, there is no element of sharing of classes between Portora and the Collegiate, or between the Collegiate and uh, Devonish. Yes, certainly. Well, the member is wrong in relation to that. For my, the Collegiate is a member of the Fermanagh Learning Community, and they do avail of sharing right across the educational uh, sectors in County Fermanagh. And that's true of the Collegiate, and as far as I'm aware, Batora as well. So they do access that. And in relation to them being the smallest grammar schools in Northern Ireland, they're capped. They're capped in relation to their numbers. So that's why they're small. If they were allowed to develop further, you would find that they would be bigger schools. Well, I, I thank the member for that clarification. She did actually say, so far as she is aware, and the information I have is that there is no sharing between the Collegiate Grammar and Portora Royal. But we can, that's for another day. No, sorry, sorry, I'm not giving way. That, that, that is the information that I have been given. The, the actual proposal is, is effectively, in the short to medium term, for a shared solution, because the two schools can operate on split sites with a, a joint board. I would suggest that a, a, if they are going to proceed with this, that uh, that joint board might do well to have an independent chairman or chairperson. But uh, for now, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I'm, I, we're, we're not content to support a motion which demands that the minister uh, refuses this development proposal. We, um, we think it has to be a ministerial decision. I hope he makes the right decision. And the, um, the Sinn Féin amendment to us looks more sensible for the present time. So we will be supporting the Sinn Féin amendment. And if it doesn't pass, we will be opposing the main motion. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Call Mr. Mervyn Storey, Chairperson of the Education Committee. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And can I, first of all, commence my comments by saying that I think we all should be glad, uh, as we meet in the House today, uh, that uh, we are not dealing with fatalities in relation to the uh, incident that has taken place this morning uh, on the Omer Road at Drunquin in regards to the, the bus accident. And our thoughts are with everyone involved in that very serious situation. It's ironic that it comes the day before uh, we will ha hold an event in the uh, Assembly tomorrow, particularly around the issue of bus safety. So our thoughts are with everyone in regards to that issue. However, none of us should be under any illusion that as the safety of children in regards to transport is an important issue, also the safety of our children in regards to the decisions that are made for them are equally important. And as you are aware, the Education Committee tends not to comment on individual development proposals. And the committee has taken a significant interest in the overarching area planning policy and the effectiveness of or ineffectiveness, as some would see it, of the current development 
development proposal process. In the case of the committee, it has taken the view that the development process, process is very overly complex and is generally poorly explained by the Education and Library Boards. Also, Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, the committee has noted apparent inconsistencies in respect of linked proposals like those identified in the motion before us today. And in fact, in the last session of this House, the Minister indicated that local area-based proposals of this kind should be subject to a single development proposal. But yet, here again, we are back in the same place with the same situation facing us where the closures and amalgamation in relation to these uh, proposals are subject to three development proposals. Mr Deputy Speaker, the committee has also uh, argued that the development proposal process needs to better include and to be seen to properly consider the voice of pupils and indeed the views of parents. I want to move on uh, as chair of the Education Committee to spend a few moments in conclusion as the DUP Education spokesperson. Uh, and someone, I have to say, and I apologise for not being present at the commencement of the debate because I was doing an interview with uh, Talkback on another issue in relation to Fleming Fulton Special School. But I have to say, when I came into the House, we are again subjected to the same hypocritical arguments from Sinn Féin about having a care for all the children in Fermanagh. As though somehow that some of us have never been in Devonish, have never been to the Collegiate, have never been to Pretoria, have never been to visit all the component parts of our educational system in Northern Ireland, when that is further from the truth. I, along with my colleagues, have continued to ensure that we keep up to date with all the issues in relation to Fermanagh. And also, for the education spokesperson from Sinn Féin, to persistently relate in terms of equality for all the children when he himself had the privileged position of having a grammar school education and of course he then wants to deny that to everyone else. Yeah. The ultimate, no I won't, the ultimate height of hypocrisy. That's what it is, hypocrisy. Now let, let's, let's get to the nub of this issue. Let's get to the nub of this issue. Why are we still 10 years on and Devonish hasn't even had a sod cut? Why are we in a position where promise after promise has been delivered to the children in Fermanagh? For 10 years we've had a Sinn Féin minister, ministers, McGuinness, Ruan, and now O'Dowd. Has one of them progressed the issue of Devonish? Has one of them delivered on the promises? No, they haven't. And so if the failure lies anywhere, it lies with those who have responsibility for the Department of Education. But also, let me, let me, let me deal with this issue that was mentioned by... Uh, yes, Mr McNair. I thank the uh, member for, for giving way. Would he uh, agree with me that today, particularly on this debate and in the area what we're talking about, actually resonates across Northern Ireland, no more so in a be brief in my own constituency, where this morning over 2,000 children have caught a bus to go to the school that their parents wanted them to go to, not by the choice, but by the absence of it being in their, in their own area. And therefore, the lesson in this debate is, take care every constituency, those in the Alliance Party who are wavering, take care in that what's happening and has happened in Fermanagh 10 years is going Order, to happen please. and hit all Order, over Northern please. Ireland. Could I remind members, please, that interventions should be direct and, and relate directly to, to what's been said. The member has an extra minute. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I, I concur with the, the member. And let me put this House in a warning. Let's remember that when the Minister, and he's now in receipt of the transport uh, report, let's be assured. This Minister will revisit this issue in relation to the distance travelled by children on the basis of parental choice. But we await to see his comments in relation to that report. But let me deal with an issue that was raised by Mr Flanagan. Not, not the first time he comes to this House with uh, a, a different view on issues. He talks about resources. He talks about the intake. He talks about how it's important that those resources are used appropriately. He wasn't using those arguments to ensure that Brola stayed open. Point of he wasn't order. using those issues. Point of order. Point of order. 
just, just for, for Mervyn's information, because he said he wasn't here, so maybe he'll read Hansard. Never mentioned resources, Mervyn. I mentioned intake. Never mentioned resources. But I can listen. I've heard, I've heard talking about the he Dunson, the head of a pen, and of course that's probably what the member's trying to do. The reality is this. You can't, argue, you can't argue to member's keep Rola. Mr. Deputy Speaker, is he the Speaker or are you the Speaker? Remind a member that he's now challenging the chair, and that's very, he very was. serious. Uh, could I just, uh, before calling the next uh, member, remind members not to make personal remarks about other members? I now call Mr. Pat Sheehan. I'll ask John Corla, and uh, I must confess from the outset I don't have a lot of local knowledge about these particular schools. And, uh, but I can, speak, I can speak on the general principles. And I did have noted so far that Mrs. Foster has been very passionate uh, about this issue. Although I did also note that I've seen one of the least passionate speeches from Lord Morrow that he's ever given in this House about the issues, issues. So maybe that tells us a little bit about how strongly he feels about this issue. And I see the chair of the committee shaking his head there. Well, why is he shaking his head? He wasn't even here. On his own admission, he wasn't even here. Well, in the interest of equality, no, I won't give away because you wouldn't give away. So, but, you know, as in all these education debates, there may be disagreement about certain issues within the debate. So we need to bring one principle to bear that is our guiding light in all of this. And the thing that we should keep front and centre of everything that we say, particularly when these debates are publicised and maybe listened to by students, not just in Collegiate, but also in Portora and Devonish. The most important thing in whatever decision is made here is what is best for the education of the children in all of the schools concerned. Now, by common consensus here today, Tom, Tom Elliott has said, I will give way. Um, I think the member maybe missed the point that I tried to make in relation to this, and I, and, and I see that he, in some way, is either trying to minimise it or trying to remake it, and it was this, that we are challenging and asking quite clearly today for one thing, for the outcomes to the benefit and well-being of the children and the pupils in County Fermanagh. Does he accept that that should be the overriding factor and nothing else should dictate the outcome? Of course I accept that. You know, but first of all, I have to make a point. Uh, for instance, when my old primary school closed, uh, it was a school I had attended, my brother had attended, my father and all his brothers had attended. When it closed, it felt like part of the family history had gone. And, you know, I would have preferred it hadn't closed, that it was always there, it was always part of the family. And I can understand but particularly past pupils might get passionate about it, and it might cloud their objectivity when it comes to making decisions about this. Uh, no, I'm not giving away anymore. I already gave away once. And I listened to Tom Elliott say that this has been going on 10 years now. There's a debate going on in 10 years, for 10 years in Fermanagh, about all of this. And, and just, we, got, we, we all received the email from uh, the Reverend John McDowell and Mr. Alec Bird uh, regarding this motion and the fact that uh, they hadn't been consulted by the proposers of this motion. And the development proposals in question had the unanimous support of both boards of governors in Portora and in Devonish College. And it said at least 26 consultations and meetings were held between 2007 and 2013 involving combinations of principals and representatives of the boards of governors of the controlled and voluntary post-primary schools in Fermanagh, together with, variously, MLAs, officers of the Western Education and Library Board, and officers from the Department of Education to discuss the future of the sectors. Full consensus could not be reached. 
Trevor Lund's right. I mean, I think we're past the point where we're going to get consensus around this issue. And you know, that's why we have a minister. Because when consensus can't be reached, when the minister has all the evidence sitting in front of him, he then can make a decision. That's why he's there. And, and, and I hope, and I'm quite sure in fact, that what the minister will do is that he will make a decision that is in the best interests of all the children in the education system in Fermanagh. Gourmet Mr. Joe Byrne. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And like Mr. Story earlier on, I want to just mention the bus accident outside Drumcombe this morning, and hopefully all of the children will make a full recovery. As a Tyrone man, I'm hesitant about getting involved in a debate regarding schools in Fermanagh, but I feel that there is an obligation as a former teacher to address the issue. Mr. Speaker, this is a hot educational issue in Enniskillen, and there are competing views about the Western Board development proposals for the reorganisation of secondary schools in the controlled voluntary grammar sector of Fermanagh. There would appear to be different views around the nature and the quality of the local area consultation that was conducted prior to the development proposals being finalised. Last April I met the principal of the collegiate school, some governors and some parent reps, and they certainly felt aggrieved about that. The collegiate community certainly feel aggrieved that they are being shoehorned into a new co-educational college incorporating the collegiate and protora schools. Both these schools have a very proud educational history and legacy going back almost 100 plus years. The proposed co-educational voluntary grammar school on a split site has generated tensions in Inniskillen between the school communities respectively. Area-based planning on education is a difficult exercise at any time in any community and this is certainly so here. Deputy Speaker, the governors and parents of the collegiate school feel that the issue of a new Devonish college is being used as a weapon in this debate by the department. It is obvious that there is a lack of broad community consensus and support between all of the existing school communities in the skill and control sector on this matter. This is regrettable. And I do recognize that Mr. Elliott mentioned that this debate has gone on for 10 years, but it may take another few years to get the outcome right. The motion is a blunt instrument at this time, but the principal of the collegiate is very sincere and dedicated to her school community. And the amendment is regarded as complicating the issue because it invokes the Devonish College issue. There needs to be more discussion in this, in this matter in order to gain broader community support for the final proposals, whatever they end up being. Thanks, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Call Ms. Mia McLaughlin. But, um, and I speak as a member of the Education Committee uh, in support of the amendment today. Uh, I think some members, uh, quite deliberately today, have attempted to suggest that the amendment was either mischievous uh, or confusing. Uh, it is not either of those. The amendment simply requires that the development proposals, as any development pro proposal should, that they ensure access to high quality education for all, for all of our young people served in, uh, and within the communities. The motion rightly commends the excellent exam results this year and I, I do think we should acknowledge those results and indeed congratulate all of those pupils in schools for their hard work and successes in this regard. The amendment, and this is there is no mischievousness or lack of clarity or confusion in this. The amendment rightly includes the provision for a new build at Devonish. That is clear. There is no confusion in that. The board and the CCMS, as has been pointed out, do have the statutory planning responsibilities. And it is important to reflect on that developing sustainable educational provision must involve meeting the needs of all of the population, not just one part of it. 
And as has rightly been pointed out, the, the WLB have proposed and published their development proposals, and it would, and it has been well reflected on, mean the closure of collegiate grammar and portora schools by September 2015. And this notion about facilitating the creation of, of a single coeducational, non denominational voluntary school. And it is important to note today that the correspondence that we've received indicates that both Devonish and the governors of Pretoria support the amalgamation of what is the two smallest grammar schools to form that co-educational uh, achievement. And the assertion, it has been claimed, that the collegiate school is the most oversubscribed school is, true, it has, is suggested as true of only the one, one of the last five years, which was 2013. Is the DUP, and I just want to pick up on a comment that Mr Lunn has made, now suggesting that a fully mixed gender educational provision would not provide better educational outcomes? Because I don't know where that's evidenced uh, anywhere, and I know Mr Lunn has, ha, has relayed that information. Nothing that I have heard today backs up the, cl the claim that any evidence-based approach to this or approach to this development proposals will produce an inequality. Nothing that I've heard in this House today from the opposite benches backs up that somehow these development proposals would produce that inequality. And I ask the DUP, where is the facts? Because the, their members have commented that this would, this would produce an inequality. Education must be centred on access for all of our young people to high quality education that is educationally sound and sustainable as well as economically viable. Decisions therefore around educational changes and choices must and must continue to be centred around children and not institutions. Call Mr Danny Kenahan. Thank you very much, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I'm pleased to get in before we get into questions. I'm also pleased to be speaking on the subject, although I'm not from Fermanagh, I, I hesitate to um, be fully involved, but with being part of the Education Committee, I think it is right that we do look at the principles. When I first looked at the motion being put forward today, I saw a very different motion from what I've actually heard coming from the DUP benches today. And I'm still concerned that we're still getting mixed messages because it looked to me a motion that was really very much taking just one side rather than trying to find a solution. And as many of you will know here, I spend my life in this chamber trying to promote we have consensus and that we find ways forward. All of us, of course, agree with commending both schools for their excellent GCSE and A-level results and that all of us should pour praise on the hard-working teachers and staff in all the schools, just as they should praise the pupils who achieved the results and the families who have helped them. Here we have two excellent schools pitted against each other, so it seems, and a community divided. And yet even that picture is not accurate, as the motion focuses on just those schools and ignores so many other aspects of the picture in Enniskillen. It ignores the other schools, the other educational establishments, their teachers, their staff, their communities, their parents, and right the way through, even to the parents and pupils who were at the schools. And I'm happy to give way. And I know the member is trying to sit on the fence, but maybe he could come out and tell us what is his party's view in relation to the collegiate? Where does he stand in terms of supporting the collegiate? Maybe without any ambiguity, without double speak, just tell us where does his party stand on the protection of the educational provision for the collegiate pupils? Um, thank the you, member the member very much for extra time. Thank you. I'm very grateful for that. And he, it will become clear as he listens to it, uh, to what I'm saying today. But at least the amendment actually does mention the other schools, albeit just definitions. And yet all are important. And yet it too only focuses on the controlled sector. There's no mention of the maintained or the integrated sectors, the latter which, of course, there may be great effects on as well. We long to see the build at Devonish, and we long to see it split away from today's motion. 
But where is the shared education drive that everyone talks about, and yet at times I think it's only our party that is pushing it? Where is the inclusion of the excellent work that the Fermanagh Trust has and is doing at the moment, showing that schools are and can work well together? That's what the public want to see, and yet I do acknowledge that all schools have been involved in it and are involved in it, but that is the leadership we should be following. I find today's motion, when I looked at it at the beginning, it looked as if it was trying to divide when what was really needed was leadership to try and find the consensus way forward, to try and give Collegiate what they want, Patora what they want, and actually work with everyone that is there. I do feel that there's an attempt to mislead the public in that the motion says in it that it requires the Minister, and it seems to try and tell the public that the Minister has to actually take on board what is in the motion today, when that isn't the case, and when we've seen most Ministers ignore no-named uh, day motions all the time. The motion does, though, quite rightly highlight the abysmal development process, and herein are the failures which relate to Petora and Collegiate. This development process fails every community wherever it is used, whether it is primary or post-primary, Belfast or Fermanagh. It creates division between schools and especially between communities, whether it's Newton Breeder, Dundonald, Shankill, and today in Enniskillen. Would the member give way? Happy to give way. Well, would the member accept the difficulties in the piecemeal approach that we have to the closure of schools? Not long ago we had the closure of uh, Ballinam Allard and Keish, which were the Duke of Westminster schools, then Listen Ski, and now the proposal to, to close Collegiate, whereas there was no pre planning for all of that. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. I fully uh, acknowledge that, and I think there lies the problems that we've got today. And as we've heard in earlier in the debate, it is because we haven't found a way forward, a whole way forward for the area, that you have the motion and the amendment today that don't suit everybody. But if we go back to the numbers that this whole process is based on. Members' time is almost up. Thank you very much. Um, I want to see a consensus solution found on the way forward that suits both the, or rather all the schools concerned and no division. Thank you. Thank you. This debate will continue after question time when the next speaker will be Mr Jim Allister. Members will take the reads while we change the top table. To the motion on the Western Education Library Board's development proposals, and I call Jim Allister. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, as MLAs, when we were discussing the future or the proposed closure of schools, we are often faced with the difficulties that the school in question is perhaps underperforming or undersubscribed, and we have all those mountains to climb. But it surely is quite exceptional that in this case we have a proposal to effectively close one of the most popular, effective, and successful schools that there is in County of Hirana, namely the Collegiate Grammar School. This is a school which is oversubscribed. Indeed, it has the physical capacity to take another 100, 150 pupils, and yet, by ministerial directive, it is capped at 500 and denied that opportunity, and hence it is highly oversubscribed. And its output is a school of great achievement and success. It has produced and is still producing a uh, wonderful results uh, from the uh, school. I should perhaps confess to a certain degree of bias because my, my wife is a former pupil uh, of the Collegiate Grammar School and she's much the better for that, I might say. It is a school that anyone would be very proud to have in their constituency and which any MLA worth their salt would be fighting to keep. And to find a proposal which comes along and suggests that this school, with all its remarkable history, with the unique niche that it fills in the education market, with its success, that this school should be picked upon to be liquidated and to be merged, is a quite reckless and perverse proposal. 
uh, and therefore I totally oppose that and support the motion on this matter. Let's be very clear. The net outcome of what the board wishes to do is to radically decrease the number of grammar school places in County Fermanagh. And that probably is the prime motivation of minister and board, because, of course, theirs is a dogma of anti-selection driven in that manner. And so I do say to this House, there is something here very much worth preserving. I hear talk about Devonish. Well, Devonish is the one reason why you shouldn't close the collegiate. Devonish speaks of broken promises. How many schools were not closed, including Lisnesky recently, on the very promise and premise that there would be Devonish? So for anyone to talk about, oh, we are jeopardizing Devonish if we don't close the collegiate, Devonish has become synonymous and the failure to deliver on the Devonish promise has become synonymous with broken promise in education in County Fermanagh. And so I say to this House that if there's something is... Yes, indeed. I thank the member for giving way. And the, 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 the matter is, and the question surely here is, is this school receiving a fair hearing? Has it received a fair hearing? And is fair action being contemplated by the department and the minister? And do you think the House will assess that it will or will not ever receive, in this instance, a fair hearing from this Sinn Féin minister? The members the next minute. is that if it had been receiving a fair hearing, we wouldn't be at this point. There wouldn't have been a proposal to tear down that which is working and that which is good. And on that precedent, one is fearful of the future and the minister's plans in that regard. It's a very simple matter as far as a grammar school education is concerned in Fermanagh. There are two operating successful schools. Let that which isn't broken continue. And particularly in the case of, a, of the collegiate, that which has been excellent and has excelled in all it does, if this House cares anything for education, it will seek to preserve that. Thank you. I now call on the Minister for Education, Mr John O'Dowds, to respond to the debate. Um boy gets lash and hotly as an Taurus skin shaw horch or I August Falsham Riven Jess Vinu Kajamar Hogatar Multi Hon Tishi August Mar Yantar Kinti or uh last can call you Deputy Speaker. I thank the members for bringing forward this motion and mark them the opportunity to explain once again how proposals are brought forward and decided upon. Uh, the motion con concerns Pretoria Royal School and Collegiate Grammar School and has two parts. Firstly, it commends the staff and pupils of the school on their excellent exam results this year. I would like to congratulate all those involved across all of our schools, especially the young people who are reaping the rewards of years of hard work. Secondly, it calls on me to reject the development proposal to amalgamate Victoria Royal School and Collegiate Grammar School, creating a co-educational, non-denominational voluntary grammar school in Enniskillen. Uh, I cannot comment at this point in the process. The consultation period has ended in regards to that matter. The Board and CCMS have statutory planning and responsibilities in consultation with other sectors. They are responsible for developing and delivering sustainable education provision that meets the needs of the population as a whole in their local areas. The area plans set out how this can be best achieved using the best data available at present. The plans are not set in stone, they are living documents which will have to change over time as circumstances change, change and more up-to-date data becomes available. Proposals flowing from the plans are taken through the statutory development proposal process and it is a statutory process. In this case, the proposals were brought forward by the managing authorities, the Western Board and the Fermanagh Protestant Board of Education. Following publication, there is a two-month objection period during which anyone may forward their comments to the department. 
Also, where possible, I meet interested parties to listen to their views. This gives people in the community the opportunity to have their say in what is being proposed before any decision is taken. And it's worth noting that some of those who have spoken loudest in the chamber today have not contacted my department to make their views known before the decision is taken. My involvement is as a decision maker. Following the objection period, my officials collate information on the proposal and the views expressed to inform my decision. Officials are currently undertaking this work in respect of the proposals to amalgamate Batura and Collegiate, and obviously points raised by members today will be reflected upon as part of that work. Ultimately, as decision maker, I will have to consider the case put forward and take a decision in the best long-term interest of providing quality education for the, uh, for the area and all the pupils who live in that area. As a consequence of being a decision maker, uh, Deputy Speaker, I will not be voting on either the proposal or the amendment today. However, until I have the full detail of, on the proposals, I owe to all concerns to maintain an open mind. This means that I am not in a position to engage in debate on detailed issues around the specific issues. Uh, in relation to, I'll just maybe just touch on one of the point, some of the points in relation to the amendment in around Devonish, and a number of members have referred to broken promises, I think was Mr Allister's term, uh, in relation to Devonish. Um, well, I would challenge him to produce the, prom the promise I have broken in relation to Devonish. I cannot speak for previous administrations or go back as far as 2004. I can only reflect on the dis comments, decisions uh, and proposals put forward by myself since I have come into office. I have committed to a new bill to Devonish. I stand by that commitment for the information of the House. The economic appraisal for a new bill to Devonish went to the Department of Finance and Personnel on Friday. Those uh, economic appraisals usually take between four to six weeks for the Department of Finance to work through. Then that will be returned to my department. I hope to be in a position within that time frame and I emphasise hope to be in a position within that time frame to have made a decision in relation to the development proposals that are before me today. Uh, if DFP approve the economic appraisal, then Davenish will move forward regardless of what decision I make in relation to Petora and Collegiate. Um, Lord Morrow asked me for a commencement time or when will work at Davenish commence. Well, Davenish is where it is to be rebuilt is quite a difficult site. Um, the topography of the site is quite challenging for builders and that will require a significant amount of enabling works before actual construction of the site takes place. But I can inform the House today that I hope those enabling works will commence in this financial year. And that is quite a piece of significant work, uh, removing quite a significant part of a drumlin on the site and also most likely requiring the culverting of a river. So quite a significant amount of work. And I hope full construction will start on the site by 2016. So there's a commencement time for you. Uh, and I, I, I've emphasised this before. Uh, if people are serious about supporting Davenish, then it bewilders me as why they come into this house and talk it down. It just bewilders me completely. But however, that's, that's the time frame. Commencement work starting this financial year, full construction work starting, and this is all dependent on uh, proper the economic appraisal being passed uh, and that time frame working through. Commencement work starting in the summer of 2016. Okay? The proposal to amalgamate Petora and Collegiate have raised heated debate in Fermanagh and indeed at times in this House. I am under no illusion as to the level of interest in the proposal, nor the emotion and sensitivities around them. They have generated a substantial public response to the Department with around 700 letters, many strongly opposed to the proposal and many strongly in support of the proposal. I have met with representatives of the Collegiate and Pretoria and Devonish College and I have to put it on record and acknowledge uh, the manner in which those meetings were held in a very professional, courteous uh, way and each side was able to put across their points in that manner and I, f I found those meetings very, very useful. I fully understand 
how much this means, the proposals means to people, and I will not take a decision on the proposals until I have had time to consider the full facts and range of opinions expressed. What I can say is that my focus will be on the needs and interests of children and young people, not in institutions. My vision for education here is that all our young people, regardless of their personal circumstances or whether they attend a grammar or non-selective school, have the opportunity to reach their full potential and are encouraged to do so. This means that we must have a network of schools sustainable in the long term and capable of providing a quality education across a broad and balanced curriculum. And they must be financially viable as well as educationally sound. We must make the best use of the public money entrusted to us. Schools must also be able to provide the environment to support pupils' personal development. This means providing opportunities for social interaction with their peers, team sports and all the other extracurricular activities which can add fun and an extra sense of achievement to school life. These are key drivers for area planning. In conclusion, none of this should surprise anyone here. I have said it numerous times before, both in the Chamber and outside the Chamber. I know there is often a strong emotional attachment to schools which in many circumstances have served generations of children. However, I as Education Minister have a responsibility to consider the best educational interests of all children and young people affected by the proposals going into the future. The best interests of pupils will be at the very heart of my considerations and when I come to make my decision in relation to this matter. I call Phil Flanagan to wind on the amendment. Thank the Minister for his response to the debate. I think this has been a useful debate, but like every other debate that has taken place in the future of these schools, unfortunately, it appears we have not reached a consensus. This debate on the future of these two schools has unfortunately dominated and divided discussion on the future of post primary education in County Fermanagh. Um, particularly within the, the controlled sector. Um, initially, um, I want to state that um, I won't be supporting the, the motion. Um, in my opinion, it's completely flawed, it's ill thought out, and it's certainly elitist. Um, but that's no real surprise uh, for the party of big house unionism. Um, this debate must include more than the protection of institutions that, that some people um, hold very dear, and, and that's fine for people to hold institutions very dearly. But as political representatives, we have to look beyond that. We have to look at the needs of the young people that need them, um, and that, what, what, that is what has to be at the forefront of our thought. Um, so we have to think about the people that use these institutions, but what about the people that weren't given the chance to get to these institutions that were turned down from getting into them at the age of 11 and were deemed failures? Uh, there's no reference uh, to the institutions that do a very good job serving those people um, in the substantive motion. Um, and for that reason, we have included an amendment, um, which the Minister has, has set out some of the changes, but also a reference to a new build at Devonish College, which is um, one of the most important things required within the control sector in County Fermanagh. Um, now, the members opposite um, talk about world-class schools, and there's no doubt about it that the, the quality of education being provided in both Collegiate and Batora um, is excellent. The people that go there really benefit from it. But, you know, there, there, there still remains this elitist approach that the people that go to those schools are better than the others, and that's not the case. All of our children should be treated equally. All of our children should be treated equally, regardless of which school they go to. Um, and that's a policy that Sinn Féin will continue to hold um, as long as we have the, the responsibility for the Ministry of Education. So the members opposite only want to talk about those who have been given preferential status and forget about those who went to Devonish College. Now, when I say the members opposite, I don't include Tom Ellett, who has spoken um, about Devonish College. Um, but the, fact, but the fact remains that the DUP now appear to be opposed to the redevelopment um, and the new build at Devonish College, which is, which is madness. Um, point, of order, uh, way, point of order. If the member is going to use language in the House, then... Is, come, well, order. Uh, it is not a point, point. It, order. It is not a point of order. Mr. Flanagan. Member. Happy to give way to the member. Um, 
So the, the current situation it, it demonstrates the need for proper area planning. Um, and we've seen an awful lot of criticism of John O'Dowd here for promises that apparently he made that he hasn't lived up to. But the promises they're talking about date back to 2004, when it wasn't um, this assembly or this executive that made those promises. Um, there hasn't been one bit of criticism from the benches opposite about the Western Education and Library Board. All of the criticism of this seems to be tabled at the Minister of Education, who, as the members across rightly know, isn't driving this forward. It's the Western Education and Library Board where your criticism should be, should be tabled. If you have criticisms about the process, bring it there. But in terms of, of area planning, um, the Minister set um, in train a process where he wanted the managing authorities to work together and bring forward um, a joined area planning process. And they failed to do it, because if you look at the proposals that are in place here, what have you got? You have a proposals, proposals to deal with the control sector in Fermanagh, and separately CCMS have proposals to deal with the Catholic sector. But they have never once spoken to each other about how these things can all be brought together, brought together to meet the needs of the young people of the county. And that is what our priority should be, not about protecting um, elite um, mentalities or about protecting um, institutions. And I want to put on record that I have full faith in John O'Dowd's ability to make decisions based on the best interests of the children and young people of my county. Um, I know that he will make decisions based on the evidence that is given to him um, on the needs of young people and not about um, protecting institutions. Um, now, I have met with, with representatives of the campaign group um, from Collegiate. I think they have put forward um, a very coherent argument. Um, but it is up to the Minister to make the decision. Um, I think this is a, a, a hot topic, um, as another member has, has looked at it. Um, but it has to be a bit more than just collegiate and Batora. And if we're going to continue, um, as the members opposite want, to just at the minute it's 70, 70 pupils each, both schools get in first year. But the mem members opposite and, and Minister, Mr. Alistair, thank God he's not a minister, um, have spoken about. Um, about re removing this cap to allow more pupils in. Would the member draw his remarks to close? Um, if, if, if the ministers, if, if they're serious about removing this cap, what does that mean for the, the, the other controlled schools in Fermanagh? Um, and if we're not talking about elitism here, how come there's been such a kick up about Petora and the Collegiate War? Was the motion about saving Listeners Key High? I now call on Arlene Foster to conclude and wind up the debate on the motion. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I will respond to the grammar school boys' comments uh, later on in my uh, response. But first of all, I do want to say that this motion concerns uh, three proposals. Nowhere in those proposals is Devonish mentioned, and therefore this motion is about the Collegiate in Batora. It's about the closure of the Collegiate Grammar School, the closure of Batora Royal School, and the creation of a new school. It's not about amalgamation. And there's been amalgamation that's been used across this chamber today. It's not about amalgamation. It's about the closure of two grammar schools and the opening of a new co-ed grammar school. And that's what the development proposals are about. Sorry? Order, order. That is not what happens in an amalgamation. And really, I have to say, I should be surprised by that comment, but I'm not, given the level of debate here today, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. We've had some very uh, personalised attacks, uh, starting with Mr Hazard on me, uh, and running right throughout Sinn Féin's contribution here today. Not from the Minister, I have to say, but from all of the other contributions, we've had quite personalised attacks. And you know what they say, when you haven't got an argument, personalise the attack on the person making the argument on the other side. But that's fair enough. That's uh, the level of debate uh, from Sinn Féin. So what we want to do through this motion today is to lift the cloud of uncertainty uh, from uh, both the Collegiate Grammar School and Batora Royal School. Because uh, in particular, the Collegiate feels it very keenly because Batora, as we've been reminded, their Board of Governors have voted in favour uh, of the closure of their school. Uh, but the board of the Collegiate Grammar School have vehemently opposed the closure of their school, as indeed uh, have uh, the pupils, the staff, uh, and uh, indeed the wider public, as shown by the fact that I presented a petition here uh, some time ago with over 7,000 names. But yet, despite that, uh, both schools continued this year to provide outstanding success, both at uh, GCSE. Uh, and A-level, 
and indeed uh, in the collegiate uh, at A level, 85% of all entries uh, were either A star to C and almost a third of the girls had at least an A star or two A's uh, in their results. So I think that's uh, quite incredible and I hope the whole House will agree on that part of the motion uh, that both schools have provided excellent education uh, for the young people in the grammar school sector in County Fermanagh. Indeed, I also want to pay tribute to the number of past pupils. This might annoy Mr. Hazard, who seems to have a problem about me being a past pupil. I want to pay tribute to the number of past pupils who have raised their voices uh, in relation to these proposals. They were taught that their voice mattered at the collegiate, and they continue to make that voice heard, and I commend them uh, for that. We've heard quite a lot of uh, uh, false uh, protestations from the benches opposite about Devonish College. Never heard them being such proponents of Devonish College before, but however, uh, there you are. The experience of Devonish College um, has led the community to a position where they don't have any confidence uh, in speculative plans. The suck it and see, Mr. Deputy Speaker, did not work for Devonish College. Um, the Duke of Westminster was closed, Liston Ski High School was closed, and how dare you, Mr. Flanagan, challenge me about Liston Ski High School when I stood up for Liston Ski High School when nobody else was prepared to stand up for Liston Ski High School. So take that back. Would all the remarks be made through the yeah. chair, please? Yeah, through the chair. Just in the same way, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, as all remarks from the Sinn Féin benches are made through the chair. <laughs> So there's no public accountability uh, in this process. Uh, the community in Fermanagh are not in favour of this. Uh, the petition showed that, I think, very clearly. Uh, and one of the schools is vehemently uh, opposed to the process. Uh, and uh, Mr Flanagan is right in one respect. This is the fault of the Western Education and Library Board, because it is they that have pushed through uh, this procedure. And as I said to them, uh, in correspondence when they were making their decision, they should hang their heads in shame uh, in relation to the closure of both of those schools. And the lack of consensus was, in a bizarre way, underlined by the email which came uh, to us at uh, 20 past five on Friday from the email account of Mr. Neil Morton uh, under the name of the Bishop of Clocker and uh, Councillor Alec Baird, wherein they say there have been a number of meetings to decide on the way forward and they have not succeeded to date. Therefore, their way should be adopted. Well, that's some consensus. And you know, Mr. Deputy Speaker, it reminded me of a quotation from one Brian Clough, who used to be the manager of Nottingham Forest football team. When he asked about how he dealt with uh, disagreements, he said, and I quote, we talk about it for 20 minutes and then decide that I was right. And that's basically the procedure that has happened here. The Western Education and Library Board have singularly failed to find a consensus in relation to this matter. Therefore, they're going to go on ahead anyway. And the email from uh, Mr. Morton's email account makes much of the fact that Lord Morrow and I did not contact him or the Board of Governors of Devonish uh, in relation to our motion. Well, you know, Lord Morrow and I are fully aware of the views of the Board of Governors of both Batoura Royal School and Devonish College. What they fail to recognise, Mr. Deputy Speaker, is that their view is patently not the view of the community in County Fermanagh, as the wider public have affirmed in numerous public consultations over this past 10 years, and that has been very clear. And what is particularly sad about this process is that it has pitted schools against each other. And of course, the Sinn Féin Amendment uh, wants to do that again today. They want to bring Devonish into the procedure, uh, despite the fact that these development proposals are quite separate uh, from Devonish College. And Devonish College Board of Governors, from some inexplicable reason, believe that their future is inextricably linked uh, to the closure of both the Collegiate uh, and the Pretoria Royal School as well. And how sad that is. Instead of wanting to see all schools flourish in County Fermanagh, uh, they decide that another school has to close for them to exist. Of course, that's not what the Minister has said himself. He has indicated that Devonish and he has again, and I thank him for it, confirmed in the House today uh, that Devonish College will go ahead and that it will be a new school on the Temple Road site and that the economic appraisal is with DFP. So we welcome that. We do welcome that. But why then does Devonish seek to close the Collegiate and Petora and reduce the numbers at uh, Grammar School uh, in Fermanagh 
Only they can answer that. I can't answer that for them. As for Batora, it's well known that the closure of the Collegiate has been a long-term aim uh, for Petora. It was tried in the early 1990s, and when Tom made reference, Mr Elliott made reference to this has been going on for 10 years. It hasn't. It's been going on for an excess of 20 years. Uh, in the early 1990s, um, it was put forward that at that stage, Petora Royal School and the Collegiate would amalgamate, and it was thankfully rejected by the then Minister uh, of Education. Uh, so instead of focusing uh, on the future and a vision for the future, uh, the Board of Governors of Pretoria have decided to retrace uh, old ground uh, and look to close the Collegiate Grammar School. But then again, they're not retracing old ground because this time they're closing the Collegiate and they're closing Pretoria Royal School, a school with over 400 years of history. And yes, we can talk about the fact that Oh, you're only talking about institutions, you're not talking about the children. Well, I know that the children that attend Batora and the Collegiate are inherently proud of the history of those institutions, and it spurs them on uh, into the future, and they should rightly be proud of those histories. Somebody said in relation to uh, the closure of Batora that it was just the beginning of a new chapter. Well, it's not the beginning of a new chapter. It's the end of the book for Batora Royal School. It's going to be the end of that school, and that has been made perfectly clear that it will be up to the new Board of Governors to decide on the name, for example, what way we're going to go forward in relation to whether there's academic selection or what have you. It'll be up to the new Board of Governors. So don't be fooled in this House today into thinking that this is an amalgamation. It is not an amalgamation. It is the closure of two oversubscribed, well-performing schools and let me say this to the House, if it happens in this case, then a, bo a board and the new board for Northern Ireland could decide that other controlled schools should be closed as well. So this is not just about Fermanagh, it's not just about Enniskillen today. There is a wider issue in relation to control sector schools right across uh, Northern Ireland. So I do say today that this debate has not been as well informed as we would have liked. There has been much said today that hasn't been correct. Uh, there's been statement made that, from, uh, that the Collegiate isn't would sharing, the and that close? is wrong. The Collegiate is sharing in a very meaningful way in the Fermanagh Learning uh, Project, which I commend and which I want to see continue, and which I hope the Minister will recognise when he's making his decision, the, the fact that they do up. share in a meaningful way. I have to say I'm glad the I got this for this House is because up. we need to debate this matter because it affects us all as members. Shall the list be made? All those in favour say aye. 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 Contrary, no. No. I, I, I think the ayes have it. Aye. I, Clear the lobbies. The question will be put in three minutes.
Order, members. Order. Would members resume their seats? Order, members. Order, members. The question is that the amendment standing on the Marshall list be made. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. No. Aye. Do we have tellers? Order members, order. The tellers have been appointed as follows. Tellers for the ayes are Chris Hazard and Pat Sheehan. Tellers for the noes, George Robinson and Adrian McQuillan. Clear the lobbies. The House will divide. Ayes to my right, noes to my left. You could well, see no, it, you've seen the back.
Secure the doors. Ready to go? Ready to go? Yeah. Order. Would members resume their seats? Order. Clerk, read the results. 90 members voted, 43 members voted aye, 47 members voted no. The amendment therefore falls. The amendment falls. The amendment falls. The question is that the motion as appearing on the order of paper be agreed. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. No. Aye. I think the ayes have it. I think, I, th I think the ayes have it. Do we have tellers?
Order members, order. The following tellers have been appointed. Tellers for the ayes, George Robinson and Adrian, Adrian McQuillan. Tellers for the no, Chris Hazard and Pat Sheehan. Clear the lobbies, the House will divide. Eyes to my right, nose to my left. Secure the doors.
Order, would members resume their seats? Order. Clark, please read the result. 79 members voted, 47 members voted aye, 32 members voted no. The motion is carried. Yeah. The motion is carried.